stuff that I've always sort of wondered about. So um, yeah, we'll just we'll just go with it. Is I want to make sure that your your book gets out there. I bought the book, and then I only read the first part of it. I got sort of sidetracked with health problems myself. So right. But we'll uh, we'll go with it here. <clears throat> Nicole is uh, if you want to record, do you want to record as well, John? No, I'm good. Okay. Okay, so let me just do an intro here, a little short intro, and then we'll just get into a like, conversation like we used to have in the old days. Okay. Right. I'm backing and, everything up, and I'll just hang out here in the background. Yeah, okay. So if you need to jump in with a question, you go ahead. Otherwise, I'll just uh, go with the interview here. Thank you. Okay, beautiful. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Grant Cameron, and I have a special guest today. Uh, I have a longtime friend of mine, John Burroughs, who is um, one of the people in ufology that you should know who he is. Uh, he's uh, associated mostly with the Reynolds from Forest incident. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into questions about what is the government up to? Uh, what kind of technology does the government have? And we're going to go through um, John's book that he has uh, just put out called Weaponization of a, an Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, the Reynolds from Forest UAP incident 40 years later. Now, John Burroughs was born in Bloomington, Illinois, that down the road from Nicole, who's also in Illinois in 1960, joined the US Air Force right after high school graduation. He received orders to go to RAF Bentwaters, England and arrived in July, 1979, 18 months before the strange encounters in the Rendlesham Forest between RAF Bentwaters and nearby RAF Woodridge, uh, Woodbridge. So John, thank you for uh, coming on and uh, talking about your, your, your new book and some of the other stuff we'll get into. You've been sort of um, um, somebody I've, I've, I've watched because I'm very much interested in the experiencers, the people who've been very close to this phenomena, not so much the lights in the sky stuff. And I know that um, you had a very close encounter. So let's get to uh, a little bit what you want people to know about your background and Sort of spell out the Reynolds from Forest story uh, for people who the five people who on the on the audience here who haven't heard it. <laughs> okay, um, well, I was in the Air Force for 20, 27 years before I retired. Started in the Cold War, ended uh, after nine eleven. A couple of years, so I was involved in nine eleven. Um, the uh, book I put it together because. There's so many things out there about Rendlesham that don't add up as far as the story itself, what really happened to us. So I wanted to put a book together doing an investigation of the incident itself. And to be honest with you, not that the incident wasn't a big deal, but a lot of the stuff that happened afterwards was uh the only way to put it is is kind of eye-opening too. the different people that came out of the woodwork about the incident their interest in it what they wanted to know about it uh when we did the book we tried to take a look at it from different documents that have been declassified about technology condine itself how it pertained what was going on just outside the back gate of woodbridge during our event the interesting thing is is that I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard people say they saw something and it can't be ours based off of what we've uncovered. And it's in the book as far as our technology and, you know, how we've developed it, where we've gone with it. Um, I think one of the biggest questions from the book is this. There definitely is a phenomenon. There was there was something in the Reynolds and Forest. It's still there. We uh, we documented that not only in the book, uh, an engineer came down and did an investigation on the whole incident in the area. But there was also a guy by the name of Andrew Pike that was doing a study of the phenomenon when the incident happened. So there's definitely a phenomenon there. The British government calls it a UAP in Condine. And they even speculated, and what I mean by speculated, they didn't, they didn't actually show the documents how the author came to this conclusion, but he stated that we were expo overexposed to UAP radiation. Okay, so let, let me start with a question because you talk about the fact that, you know, there's different sort of stories out there about what happened at Reynolds and Forest. Do you think that the government actually messed with you guys in terms of get, 
feeding different stories to different people. Because one, of, I think the, the main objection people might have to the Runs from Four story is that it, there's, there's various versions of the story. And um, it's sort of like, if you guys can't get it together in the story in terms of you know, what, what, was, what, what actually happened, so what did the government actually mess with people in terms of, you know, debriefings, brainwashing, that kind of stuff? That was always a story that went around. Well, Colonel Hawes pushed that uh, theory from almost the beginning. <clears throat> Some of the people involved, Peniston and Bestenza, claimed that they, you know, were brought in and talked to. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is that this is the hard part with this whole thing is that Without a real scientific community coming together and getting all the data, which is what I believe Lou Elizondo and his crew is trying to do through Congress, that you don't, you can't understand what the effects would be totally on a human when they had interaction with this known phenomenon. And I say known because the Condon Report, which is an official British document that was classified secret states there is a phenomenon it exists it's intelligent it's capable of doing things that you know that can't be explained and so it's there um stuff that happened at skinwalker ranch and there appears to be different areas around the world that have this phenomenon present and it's definitely an energy energy based um uh, bradshaw ranch in sedona is another area where they've had stuff that goes on up there that the government actually sees bradshaw uh, and then eventually turned it back and then they've taken it back again. So there's something going on as far as the phenomena and the effects on humans. And Condine itself says when you get real close to something, it can mess up what you remember seeing or what, how, you, you know, what you perceived it to be. So. Okay. So um, with, with the, um, you mentioned Rendlesham is still going on. So I guess the question would be, why three days at Randall's from this main three days where this thing appeared and reappeared and, and, and does it still going on? And what are you talking about in terms of this being a special, is it a special area according to you? Well, I'm not calling it a special area. It's just, there's a known phenomenon there. And Andrew Pike, who wrote one book and then followed up with another, mysteriously he pulled them both. Uh, the first one he caught a lot of flack for and there was speculation because he was working in the investigation, he got really upset when it came up that it was probably government sponsored, but it was through a university that was getting funding from the government. So you can leave it there. What what is known that was going on during our event was Marconi and the United States government were working on weapons, different types of weapons, and provoking the phenomenon itself. And that came straight from Andrew Pike, who was working on the project. You know, during that time frame. In fact, it's interesting that there's a couple of things that stand out about the folklore of Rendlesham, but they actually were involved. The tunnels that were there that they claimed were used were actually being used to send EM frequencies to provoke the phenomenon. Andrew Pikes told me that. Okay. So they were provoking this phenomenon, studying it, trying to figure out, guess what, how to weaponize it. Okay. Yeah. Then the second thing that came up almost at the beginning was the White Lighthouse was involved. Well, the interesting fact of the matter is, and it's in the book, most people don't know this, but they were working on the death ray, the English government, when they developed radar. And the original radar started right there outside the back gate of Woodbridge. And the original tower that's there was modified, which we found documents to prove it, to actually send EM frequencies to the lighthouse to um, actually have them go inland. So they were working on all kinds of projects with Bowsey, Marlos from Heath, forget the other base, I wanna say Bowden or whatever. They were working on all kinds of things and even Chick Sands was involved with the, um, what is it called, the elephant cage that they used to use. Now they use a little satellite dish, but that was being used for communications and spying on Russia. So there was all kinds of stuff being tested right there at the time of our incident. So do you, you mentioned them provoking, and you and I have talked about this before, that provoking the phenomena that it appeared that we talked about this thing about pe pe uh, uh, experiencers being used sort of to bait them. Is this stuff, is this common practice in, around the government or is this just a British thing where, because you mentioned the word provoking, what do you mean by provoking? Trying to 
get the phenomena to come close or well that- they were if you read if i know you didn't get through the whole book but in it that one of the things they've been working on is cloaking plasmas plasmas can be used to cloak they can be used for like um can't think of the word now like the you know when when they want to put out a false signal on radar or the you know get the weapons to um the weapons to go for the plasma instead of the, the aircraft. But anyway, it can be used countermeasures. It can be used as countermeasures. It can be um, used for the warp bubble that they're working on for warp travel. Um, it can be used for cloaking. It can be used for all different kinds of things. So do am I saying that we were, especially the first night where we had tests? I don't think so. I think basically they were working on it and what they didn't expect was us to leave the base. I think that was the thing. I mean, technically, because when we first called it in, we did go off the base. So when Stephens first saw it, got my attention, I saw it. We drove down to the end of the road. We got, I got out of the vehicle. There was a high intensity electricity in the air. Didn't seem right. We called it in. They, uh, they did a radar call in at the, from CSC to uh, our RABCON to uh, Heathrow Tower to Eastern Radar. And there was a confirmation that there was something on radar that disappeared over the area. So the shift commander, I mean, it was a little dicey. I mean, cause this was off base. In theory, the British probably should have just been called cause there was not an immediate threat to the base at that moment. But because they thought an aircraft went down they sent three of us off. And we went out there and had an encounter, you know? And then after that, everything was, you know, high alert as far as what I mean by high alert too. No, we didn't go into alert like a normal alert. Everybody was watching the forest. And so over the next two nights, other things were seen. Never mind prior to our incident, things had been seen. And after the three nights stuff went on. But there was a lot of intensity looking into the forest. And eventually it appears, which I don't have exact proof other than when I talked to uh, General Williams, that that the right hand wasn't talking to the left hand and what was going on at base had nothing to do with bent waters or woodbridge in other words they weren't involved in the testing or anything else this was all being done by marlis from heath bowsey the british government and the american government and scientists so we would not have had any reason to know what was going on we just stumbled out there the first night into the middle of the whole thing so so you're saying like you you mentioned the you know that the the they came in from Germany to pick up stuff and yes, you- Sunday night they brought, well, the, it goes into the book Sunday night, a plane came in from Langley. They were out in the forest, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in the book. I um, was able to get in touch with an OSI agent that laid it out pretty good. He was involved. I confirmed the guy was there because I didn't know his name at the time, but Halt confirmed it. It's in the book um, that he was there and that they brought on all kinds of agencies in from the outside, all the alphabet soup agencies and stuff. One of the things they were concerned about was that something to do with Russia. And in fact, the OSI said, agents said that um, they caught a Russian agent in the area during that whole thing that went on. Wow, oh, because that was one of the stories that I originally heard was that the Russians were on the Polish border and you guys had the tactical nuclear weapons there. Did that have anything to do with it? The fact that the that the there was this standoff on the Polish border with uh, solidarity and stuff like that? No, I I don't believe that at all. I believe that um, they were working on weaponization of the phenomenon was there. And I mean, and basically, if you go to that point or even right before it and go forward, you'll see how what they were working on there has been you know put into action. It's being used that you know they're 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 working off this phenomenon to weaponize it they're doing it and um that i don't think anything having to do with what we weren't on alert that was the rumor that started by a guy that has been pretty much his whole credibility has been destroyed but um we weren't on alert we never went on alert you know what i mean the base was not on alert we were normal and and when i said earlier that we went on alert what i meant by that was just simply everybody was watching the forest you know once the story came out, we went out there. It couldn't be explained. If you read the statements that were written, even by um, Baran, Verano talked about stuff that had been going on prior to our incident and was going on. So now 
now our base wanted to know what was going on right outside the back gate. You know what I mean? Because in theory, it could be a threat. I mean, we don't know what it is and it's not acting normal. And we had an encounter with something. So they wanted to know what was going on. So, so no, we weren't on any kind of up heightened security or alert other than it was over the holidays. We were worried about the red brigade a little bit. That was the stuff, um, you know, coming out of Ireland and stuff. There was an issue with it could be some terrorist activity. You know, it wasn't high alert, but we were just briefed that something could happen. You know, IRA, I should say, not the Red Brigade, IRA. So, so you, you were you were involved all three nights. I think some of you guys are coming in on your own time, correct? I mean, well, no, I was involved in two of the three nights. Um, the first night I went out there, three of us did into the forest. The second night, a lieutenant and um, Master Sergeant Ball, which has been confirmed with different people that were on duty that night had some kind of encounter and the lieutenant from what we were told which i've never been able to talk to her about it had an encounter where the light or whatever it was shut her jeep off and, and scared her to the point where she was relieved of duty because on the third night she should have been out there with the group but she was relieved of duty um one of the individuals involved claimed that she popped a couple rounds at it on the second night now when i say that it's never been no one else has ever said it but one person but there was some kind of confrontation and she did get relieved of duty and she did leave the base shortly afterwards. Then I went out on the third night off duty with two other guys I worked with on flight that were off duty and we met up with Halt's party. Yeah, no, that, that gets to, I was going to bring up, this is this Bonnie girl that would, is she, is she one of the 200 people that's in the study that was affected? Is she not that I'm aware of um, the last I've heard, was she disappeared and somebody tracked her down to Italy, but she didn't want to talk about it. And the Baran, not Baran, I'm sorry. England was another guy that was out there on the third night and he's actually surfaced, but he won't talk about it. So, Okay. Because that, that's my, one of my main questions. And you know, the, the controversy about the guns that she, I mean, she had a, she had a weapon according to GAU. Hall, she would have had a GAU, but she would have been going between bases, which we were authorized to do. Okay, but that that was my my idea. Is and the big question I have is is the the effect because there was the, you know the story that was told that that you had the sidearm and 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 this idea that the weapons may have had something to do with it. Uh, so can you address that? Uh, yeah, I can. I can address it. Okay, this is what I remember happening. Um, when when the security team came down, that there was a discussion on the phone. That's when the radar um, incident was documented um we were told to leave our weapons with stephens stephens didn't want to go out there and in actuality he shouldn't have gone out there because we would have had two the only two ranking guys out there in the forest which is not what you want to do anyway okay. you want to leave somebody there you know an nco on the base um so we were left our weapons with stephens and we went out there now what i remember was getting close to it and Pennison was in front of me and he yelled for me to open up fire on it. And I yelled back at him, I don't have my weapon. And, uh, but Kabansak did do an interview with James Fox where he stated that we were all right there on top of it. And I drew my weapon and we all blacked out. Yeah, but I don't remember having a weapon yeah. or drawing my weapon on it. And I joked about it with Fox because he asked me about it. I says, well, I didn't, but what would have probably happened if I did and I would have done something with my, you know, fired at the thing, you know, and I don't think it would have ended well for us. Because my, my question in, in when I've always heard the story is and, and answer this for me, like, so if it was a, like a, a radiation type effect, if you're in too close to it, like they're talking about the 100 meter effect, if you get inside, it's, it's dangerous. Why were you injured and why was Peniston and Kabanzak not injured. If it well, was an effect like a radiation. Oh, thing. Okay, well, you have to explain it this way. First of all, Peniston's denied Kabanzak was with us until he slipped up on Jimmy Church and he okay. admitted that all three of us were together when we came up on it. Um, the thing about it is, and I don't, and I'm going to say this straight up because this is how I feel. I don't trust most of what Peniston has said now because of different things that have taken place. But he ha had said, that he actually saw me frozen by a beam. And then I was, I was, you know, I was frozen by something. Now the third night, um, Adrian Bestenza and I got close to this. I went in it and he saw me disappear and, and he actually had part of it come over the top of him. Now, what I can tell you is 
because it's in the book now and Adrian's admitted to it, we both have been compensated from the government for our injuries from the incident. That we're the only two that have ever gotten anything for it. So Okay. And that was through Kit Green that 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 well now now do you want me to ask me some questions about it so we I don't you know well, repeat okay, myself. Well, let, well well let's let's go to the, the effect because now this big study's out about the two hundred guys and, and the guys on the street, I mean they're, they're most researchers would give the right hand to be within 100 yards of a ufo and so the question is how, how did so many military people get so close to ufos where they're like 10 meters away and they're getting injured and stuff and you you hear this is there a connection between the military and ufos i guess that'd be my first question well i mean okay let's let's go back let's go back to the recent stuff the to the star stuff the nimitz incident and what was it the washington what was the other aircraft carrier was out what, what was the one uh, off the, the east uh, roosevelt was it the roosevelt roosevelt okay if you knew the areas where these stuff took place, you would know we have high technology both in, in yeah. Florida and down there off the coast of San Diego. We have radars, EM frequencies, all this stuff down there. That's as much as I could say. But we have all kinds of stuff. So there was encounters down there with these two carriers with possibly our technology. Or there's also a possibility it's not only our technology, but there's something there, too. You know, because down there in the San Diego area, there's been all kinds of reports of weird stuff going on. But just remember, that's the area where the Navy is. Okay, now, with the Air Force, you got planes in the air. They're having encounters with whatever this is. Um, the interesting thing was, and this probably, you know, it's a fiction TV show, but um, NCIS Los Angeles has done a couple different um, shows on a Navy encounter with the UAP. The last one was, basically based off the Nimitz incident. But the interesting thing was they came to the conclusion pretty quickly that it was UA, it was drones, which by the way, what did the one pilot say? Dude, it's a bunch of drones, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. Now what they, what they were shocked to find out was these drones are not controlled by man on the ground. They're controlled by AI. So they are self-learning. They're programmed and they go up and they do their own thing off of their programming so no man is controlling them now what was interesting two days later the united states government admitted they were selling drones that could do exactly that to the ukrainians they could take tanks out so we have this whole scenario with them working on drones and ai and um what was one of the things they were studying they were not only studying the effects on the body but the effects on the mind you know what the mind can do okay so that was who's, who's doing the study who's, who's that was study? uh that was green was part of that green and no one and green that yes AC they were thing. they yeah. were working on the the mind itself not only the effects on the body but the mind and yeah. what the mind but it went further they were looking at was the mind different in the people that had the encounters yeah yeah and they and you were one of their subjects right yes it, but let me i want to clarify this this will be a great time to do this okay i've been accused of being bought up by the government Okay, I wasn't, all right? We we did, you were there, Grant. We did yeah. that presentation for Bassett. The, uh, what was it called? The uh, the ex or the uh, citizen's hearing. Yes, we did the citizen's hearing. I don't know if you, did you watch our presentation? Yeah, that's. The, I think that's what changed everything. When your lawyer was there and that sort of flipped the whole story upside down, right? Yeah, I set that all up purposely that way because I had issues going on that nobody knew about at the time with the government itself. They were denying I was in the Air Force. They altered my DD form 214. They held my records back from me. And all this was going on. So we set it up like that. We did. And I'm not slamming any of the other panels, but we were as close as what you would do if there was a hearing going on in front of Congress, as far as military people being presenting what's going on. And you definitely would want a lawyer there because of the ramifications of classified material and everything else. So when we when we went and presented it, I presented documents to show that this was going on. This wasn't made up. Here's the documents. Here's a document from Kyle saying my records are classified. Here's a document from them saying they altered my DD form 214. So they were blown away. Not only that, were they blown away by the fact there's a classified records section that they didn't even know about. Some Congress people know about it, but most don't. The guy that did was, you remember the old guy from the Maryland district? He did because guess what? His aide came down and talked to me. 80% of the people they deal with are classified projects that the guys can't get their... Um, they can't get medical care because they can't reveal what they were damaged by. Yeah. So she helped my 
McCain's um, aide get get some stuff done behind the scenes. Okay, the only other guy, do you remember Gravel? Yep, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. He, you remember he, he was, when he addressed this directly and asked? Yeah, us he what was we he was responsible telling. for it, and he couldn't believe it was going on. <laughs> no, no. We remember when he said, "What are you holding back? You can tell us you have immunity." And the the lady that was running it said, "Oh no, do not say another word. Do <laughs> not go into any details." Because he had been the one with the papers, the Vietnam papers, and all that other stuff, yeah, this, and the technology that got shut down. The CIA was working on. He knew something was up with that, and he and he wanted us to try to expand on it. And at the time, we weren't in the position to do it because not because we couldn't have talked about it, but we didn't have the backup documentation to prove it. Yeah. But he he smelled something going on too. Yeah, I so, remember the, the one of them had said this thing about the, the he was with veterans. That was his job. He was part of his job as a senator or a congressman or whatever. And he couldn't believe this was going on. And suddenly realized that was the guy out of Utah. That was the guy that he was the one that got the letter. Remember, they got they did a letter they signed to send to Obama, and they sent a letter to the VA. What was interesting was there's a lot of stuff going on in the Obama administration at the time, but the letter went to the White House, the White House kicked it over to the VA. Podesta wow. looked at it. Podesta wow. looked at the letter. So it ended up in my VA file, which what, what little I could get from the VA on what they were doing. Because most of my stuff was locked down. In fact, what was interesting was when they denied it based on the fact I wasn't in the Air Force at the time and my records didn't exist for any injuries at the time, um, the uh, I had to appeal it and I went to a state agency that had access they found out that on our uh, FOIA request, McCain did a FOIA, and about 80% of the documents that we requested were held back. They wow. gave they only gave 20% of what they were holding on me to, to McCain, which is not supposed to happen either. So, Do you hold any hope that we're going to be able to get through this? Because it seems like they're, they, they hold all the cards. And if you, with your lawyer in front of this big panel, were able to push one thing through, but... I mean, it must be like 99% of the stuff is, is nobody knows what's going on here. Oh, boy, you're walking down a thin line of what I can talk about what I can't talk about right now. <laughs> um, and I'm not trying to be um, secretive other than the fact that I've made, I've given my word. I won't talk a lot about what I've been approached about um, for now, you know, until it takes place. Um, what I can tell you is this. Um, there is movement. But just remember that this happened before years ago with Congress getting, you know, you know, taking an interest. Uh, remember the guy from New Mexico that mysteriously died. Shit, yeah. And, yeah. Um, so but there's more this time. And they've done all these things to set up a, a group to investigate the um, to investigate the cover up by the government. Um, and have I been approached? Yes. Um, has anything happened yet? Not yet. Is it going to happen? Not sure yet. Um, there's, as you know, Ukraine's popped up now and a bunch of other stuff that's going on that's kind of taken some of the steam out of the whole thing. But there is an attempt, at least on the surface, but remember how Blue Book ended up, um, to uh, dig deeper into what, what is really known and what isn't known and what's being covered up. And why is it being covered up? But as you know, it's real easy for the government to yank chains when they want to, you know, and not give all the details out. Um, so do I think we're going to get an answer? The honest truth is no, because it all goes back to one thing, national security as far as weapon, weapons, you know, and weapons capabilities. And you, you, they've done what Bigelow called confirmation. They've confirmed there's something out there. They don't can't, they, and they're telling you they don't know anything about it or what it is, which is hogwash. With the technology we have today and what we've done, and just the different stuff that's leaked out about the study of the phenomenon that's going on, that they have a they have a working idea of what they're doing, what they're developing weapons off of. Yeah, that would that would make sense. The highest classified secrets are weapon secrets, and it would make sense. Well, what that what did Reed hand it over? What did Reed want to do as soon as he got funding to Bigelow and he started looking at stuff? He wanted to turn it into an SAP program. Yeah, and that's one of the things that Green. When we'll get into Green here in a minute, but when he um when he opened up because that was a weird scenario because when they helped me, they said nothing was ever going to be said, and then they leaked started leaking stuff out afterwards but one of the things he said on the you know he wrote a statement about what went on with me 
And he said, my injuries go to SAP programs. Yeah. That's why my records are classified. Yeah. I think Green Hit did that as well. I mean, where he. No, he wrote it. He said it in his his written statement that that my records are being held back because they're linked to SAP programs. That's where I kind of wanted to just jump in real quick. Um, John, I think you pointed out such a special moment for people around my age with that citizens hearing and the footage that came out after it. And just anybody that kind of followed along with your anthology side of this story, it automatically made me jump to this interview that you did, or maybe it was a co-interview you did with Linda Moulton Howe, and maybe okay. you were talking some things out with Richard Doty, but that really laid out the anthology of how you got help with your health issues and really how you had to bounce around to get those issues moved to that state. So I just kind of wanted to point that out to our audience a little bit. Well, I can expand on that. Um, Green, it was, okay, he came and saw me. He, he came, he met with Pat, the attorney in uh, Jackson. Then he came out, I was living in Sedona. He came out and visited. He came out, Pat flew out with his wife, who's an attorney and a nurse. And he did a medical evaluation and I didn't get told at the time, but he had, he stated a path that my heart was close to failure. And so they wanted to, um, they wanted to do a DNA test on me and an MRI. Well, I said no to the DNA immediately. And for good reason, cause I'll explain it down the road, but um, the MRI was interesting, but they couldn't do it because I have a pacemaker. And, would, and even though my pacemaker was set up where you could do an MRI, they couldn't justify doing it um, based off of um, based off the risk. Even though there was a low risk, they didn't want to risk the uh, the actual uh, study of the mind through the MRI. But um, so he wrote a letter that's now classified. Um, it wasn't at the time, but it's classified. And he laid out to the VA and the DOD exactly what what my problems are and why. And as soon as I took it into the, the VA, they got on the horn. And the next thing you know, everything started moving forward with what they had, my treatment, my surgery. Um, they brought a DOD doctor in. Um, they did their own. <laughs> they did their own blood draw on me down there that got sent to an offsite classified lab for DNA study. Can you believe that? Yeah, yeah. And then. Then Alexander told me, because we did an interview with him on Phenomenon Radio, he told me, he says, did you give him your DNA? And I said, I said, no, I said, I haven't done it. And he said, well, they got it. They got, not only did they get your blood, which I've got the documents to show they did, but they got tissue. And that was the most important thing of all. Not only did they get my blood, but they got my tissue that was damaged by this. So that, that, that moved the ball forward even more. So. John, so wait, when, oh, oh no, what wait. are your thoughts with this latest list that's been released about supposed experience or symptoms? Like, do you feel like yours fall in line with that list? Have you seen it? <laughs> I had all those documents before they got declassified. Now, right. the interesting thing was, no, they were given to me by the group. The interesting thing was what most people don't know, but McCain got me my settlement. He was the biggest driving force besides the attorney and what Green did. But I don't think most people followed this, but I, I, I don't know, you guys aware? As soon as I got my settlement, they went to McCain's Committee for Funding for Exotic Technology. Wow. Those DIA papers were released to McCain's Committee when he was still alive before he died. So he was already in, in the loop of what was going on. And not only that, but one of the things that the big showdown came down to was he told after they said they were going to give me my settlement, then they didn't, it got pulled from way up high department of justice was involved. They turned around and he came back and said, fine, then let's open a hearing on the whole thing. And he was going to do a hearing and we were going to file a federal lawsuit on why my records were going to be held back to include calling every, we sent out all the letters to bring in each and every, every individual brought involved, including Penniston, to have them do a um, uh, do an initial interview and then be called to court to explain what happened at the incident. And the other thing that Penniston has not been truthful about, if you go back and look at the hearings, he said he had injuries from the incident. 
And now he's claiming he wasn't. So he's backtracked on that one too. I think what I follow with that is uh, his sleep-related issues is- No, it was PTSD and it was also um, his balance. And if you yeah. go and look at the if you go and look at the symptoms, that's one of the things that affects your equilibrium and everything else. And he had an ear issue that came up from it afterwards. And I've had some of those same issues, but not that severe. Wow. Yeah. So when did your injuries first start? Like you, I think you went to the hospital right away. Can you go through? Your- well, I didn't actually go to the. Ho- Here's the thing, I didn't feel good afterwards. Um, I, I got sick two or three times. Um, my mouth turned white. My gums turned white. Um, When I came back to the States, which that was another thing that's not true. Um, There are different people supposedly got orders out there right away. Tamplin did. I I finished my tour and where my orders got juggled around, which was interesting, I didn't know at the time, was after the News of the World um, came out, uh, Halt and I got sent to Korea. He was at Kunsan, I was at Osan. Williams was our boss. He was a PACAF commander. They hit us over in PACAF once the story leaked and CNN was on it to, because you had to get special permission to come over. And DeCarl tried to come over and he was denied a visa to come over and talk to us. Wow. So, um, my, but what, here's where it got really interesting, which again, I didn't know at the time. Um, I came back to the States. I happened to get stationed at Grissom, which I didn't want to be. And everybody else leaving, most everybody got their, what they got. A few people got Northern Tier, but law enforcement usually got, if you had eight choices, you got one on the basis. I didn't want to go to Grissom, but I got it. But when I got sick, they sent me to right path. And that's where they did all the analysis on my blood, my heart, and everything else. Which at the time, I didn't know. But now I know that that's where they do a lot of the different things having to do with people that have injuries like this. So who's who's running the show here? I mean, and you've you've looked at this for 40 years. I mean, who's who's pulling the strings? Somebody seems to, according to the way you've got it in the book and the way you're spelling it out now, somebody seems to know how all the pieces fit together. And there's an organized, it seems to be an organization that's keeping track of this, moving people around, hiding people, hiding documents. Who do you think is actually behind this? Is the president behind this? Well, you know how elected officials are, they come and go. So no, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I just, I'll give you people a brief synopsis of what I mean. And I'm not trying to drag up politics other than this. When Trump was in office, he ordered the troops out of Syria. And when Biden came in, people were questioning why troops were still in Syria. And he said, they're not there. And they did some investigations and yeah, they were. They, they, they actually defied Trump's order to leave. And the way they got around it was simply reclassifying the mission. But they were there doing the same mission. They just reworded the mission. So do, do does the president, the president's a pawn, okay? And if, as you know, this is usually a topic you don't, even, up until recently, and they still haven't addressed it. It was interesting, Trump kind of skirted it a little bit, but whatever it is, think about this. Trump was a hothead. And he'd talk about just about anything. He didn't want to talk about UFOs, did he? No. He didn't really say much. He said and, he was interested, yeah. Yeah, but he, you know, you would think he didn't have a problem talking about anything else. Why didn't he bring up what it was? You know, he could have. So whatever it is, what's really going on behind the scenes that ties into industrial military and, you know, um, security state. And, and what I mean by that is just simple. They, um, they control the narrative through... You know, most of the stuff now, when you do FOIA and stuff, even the one I got from the MOD, which was very interesting, and it's in the book. I went after him when I got, I went after him off this documents later classified in Condine and stuff. And they openly admitted to me that they were working on military technology involving the phenomenon. And they couldn't talk about it because part of it tied into, you know, uh, industrial complex as far as you know, civilian contractors working on this technology. And so it's all tied up. And that's why I find it's interesting that Mellon, who was, you know, he was the first guy put in that that new unit. What is, I don't even know what it is, but he was, they appointed that to oversee all the intelligence agencies to get him to work together, you know, together again. He was a deputy, he was a deputy director. He wasn't the director. And then what's the guy's name that um, was on to the stars that worked with Skunk Works? Uh, um, <laughs> um, he's the justice. one I always forget. Justice, justice yes. 
Yeah, Justice. If you watched them identified when they narrowed him down a little bit, he said it could be our stuff, but he wouldn't be at liberty to admit it, even if it was. And so, the, so that they would be the, the contractors. So we're, the old back to Eisenhower, the beware the military industrial complex. Is that what we're looking at here? That yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's when Truman started all these agencies. And then Eisenhower was military and was involved with that, and they were solidified themselves. He warned the general public of it. And then Kennedy, for all intents and purposes, was trying to break some of it up early on and got, he died. Now, people, some people say he died because they killed him or, he, you know, whatever. But the point being is, is these complexes control this stuff. And when you talk about national security, that's a fine line. And, you know, I'm not going to challenge national security overall. The problem is the, and in essence, the American people have no say in what national security is or isn't and what they need to know and what they don't need to know. So they've got, there's people making these decisions every day based on what needs to happen with our country or Canada and these other countries. And it's really outside the realm. It's the one thing that's completely outside the realm of the uh, public, of uh, opinion. And think about it. I mean, the presidents and everybody else gets elected. These guys don't. They're appointed. You know, directors are appointed. But one of the guys I think that knew the most, that put it mostly together was Bush, the old Bush, because he worked in the diplomatic thing. He was in China. Then he became the director of the CIA. Then he became the vice president. And then he became the president. And I think he probably had a better beeline on everything that was going on because of his background. You know, and I don't think ever since then, any of these guys, they, they don't even sniff what's going on. They're just given a briefing. And then if it's bad enough, they have to address the American people. But they're, they don't really have a lot to say. Yeah, which leads to the question of I mean, maybe you can get into some of the technology you think they've developed from this. And the question that always pops up to me is we've got all this technology, but we lost to a bunch of Stone Age uh, guys driving around on donkeys in Afghanistan. So has it really helped us any? Well, okay, they didn't want to win in Afghanistan. <laughs> okay. They didn't want to win in Iraq. Um, I'm going to carry this and go. Oh, I got it. Okay. Uh, unless you want to freeze this. this no, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, this is a casual conversation. Just do whatever you got to do. Okay. Um, they, they didn't want to win in Vietnam. They wanted to feed the, the complex. Okay. Um, I, I'll give you a story that's not classified. Um, after 9 11, I. Um, I got sent over for Tora Bora. And when I went over, the guys that were flying the airplanes had been going nonstop because most of the um, most of the civilian side had been shut down. OK, they were shutting everything down. I think that particular company was down to six airplanes, which was Evergreen Airlines, which I don't know if you know that, but that's tied to the CIA. Yeah, yeah. OK. And so they got told now, interesting enough, and this is exactly what they said. And it happened. These guys told me they were all retired Air Force said that their company was told to plan for a 20 year campaign wow. and to 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 um, to completely um, completely ramp up and buy as many airplanes and hire as many pilots as you can. So they already knew. Now, can you imagine this? less than what, three months or four months after, um, after the incident happened, they were already planning for 20 years. Wow. So if you're planning for 20 years, does that sound like you plan on winning? Yeah. yeah. Then the, another thing that happened, I was at a classified location and Tommy Franks came in because he was there negotiating um, the agreement for us to be there. And he, he made a comment to the us that he said, if my president wants us to go to war, we'll go to war, but he's not giving us what we need to do, the job right. And if you go back and look at the history of Iraq, we had more than enough troops to go in and take out, take Iraq, but we didn't have enough to hold it. So there was no, there was no emphasis on winning that war. It was simply to feed the industrial military complex. In my opinion, based on being there, seeing what I saw and everything else. And, and you go down the road, What's this going to do? These UAPs are going to do. It's going to be a whole new line of exotic weapons that are going to come out of this. And the issue that I was always told, because I was really good friends with Chuck DeCaro, 
was there was always a fight. It wasn't a religious fight inside the halls of Congress. It was a funding fight. And the fight was about the weapons that work and the weapons that are on the drawing board and will they work or not. And a lot of this stuff that they're working on through DARPA and everything which is out there, you know, whether they can beam you from point A to B, they can use this terahertz radiation, which green and put off introduced to everybody back with my incident is stuff that's not reliable and costs a lot of money. So there's always been a fight going on with that. But like I said, right away, right after my settlement, they went to McCain's committee for funding for with these DIA papers that they declassified to try and get funding for exotic technology. Have you kind of have you lost that support since Kane has passed or has somebody else kind of replaced his role for, you know, trying to help? Well, you out? if you're asking me, am I a little nervous that he passed? I mean, other than it was sad that he passed and right. the way he had to pass. But, yeah, there is a little bit of concern of mine because one of the things that's interesting about Lou is, and I, I can't confirm this, but he said this publicly, that his his family and himself have been threatened. And he supposedly was quite a bit higher up in the government than I ever was. And he um, he uh, has probably aces in the hole and he's concerned, but I don't have that kind of protection. So are you asking me, am I concerned a little bit? Yeah, have I ever been threatened? No. The only thing I ever was told was right after I got my settlement was I got a letter from, from the VA and the DOD stating that my case was now closed, mm -hmm. that I was, they took responsibility for my injuries and that they were going to take care of me and that they would no further, they would no longer answer any of my open FOIAs or any other FOIAs I have about the incident. And basically, uh, Cheryl Bennett, who's got a chapter in, in the book, stated to me that that was their way of telling me to let it go and be happy with what you got. Because if you go down the road further, it could cause some issues. Wow. And Grant, um, I know you guys, uh, John, real briefly, you did mention Andrew Pike's book and kind of the surrounding the three days or the three night event of Rimbledon Forest. Just, I flipped open the book real quick. I mean, a lot of this even goes back to like 1957 and it explains maybe why they would start doing testing in the area, but all the earthquake activity that's there in the surrounding forest in 1957, they called them the tadpole lights that would appear. Yeah, the, the interesting thing here. about that is the guy that authored the guy that authored the condom report could have been because most people don't know this either. Um, the first incident happened at Bent Waters. They had pilots chase chase something in the sky. I forget exactly what the description was, but that happened. And if I remember right, let's see, Kirkland happened the second time. Something happened to Kirkland in March, and then we had our incident in December. Then, so the, the, the first time Bentwaters happened and then they had an incident at Kirkland afterwards. So, and they were real close to each other. And it was very interesting to me that the, that both times Bentwaters had something to happen, Kirkland did. And also there's a possibility there's the pilots were British that chased it the first time. There is a possibility that one of the pilots was the guy that co-authored the uh, Condine report. Oh, wow. And yeah, there is just all these reports and that's where people get caught up that Rendlesham Forest is just your guys's story, those three nights. There is all these other little nuances of high strangeness that go back, you know, and I think still continue to this day, honestly, if you talk to people that live in the area, it's the red, orange, and white orbs in the sky, you know. Well, I can explain one of the things that's interesting was that's why I said I wish I had a dollar for every time somebody said it couldn't be us. Those beams of light that Hulk saw actually were probably lasers that were using, they were being used to control the plasma or the blue lights in the right. sky. So that's an interesting thing that at that time, none of us would have known about, but through declassified documents, it adds up now well, that that's probably what was going on. And you did a brilliant thing. Grant and I talk um, locations and, kind of lump in Navy technology and this anthology, like you brought up Lockheed having secret stuff, but you pointed out what's happening off our, you know, 
Western coast in the United States? Why is it important there? What do they study? The same thing about Rendlesham. And you brought up these early years where they're studying this, but this also has links to the European Space Agency and our own NASA, because I think if I follow the science correctly, the studies they were doing back then are now happening up in space, all in, involving around a exotic vacuum material or objects, exotic vacuum objects, EVOs. Well, quantum physics is huge yeah. in this, and quantum sure. consciousness is huge too. This layer of everything getting blacklisted is kind of over the military, over you know our space agencies. So there is. You know, a blast well, radius of this tech. The interesting thing about this, my co-author, James Waro, we, we together, we found some documents, but he found a lot more. And some of my stuff was back back in 10 when I was looking at technology. Because I'll tell you why. I saw some stuff when I was deployed that looked a lot like Rendlesham. And I was like, whoa. And But at the end of the day, a lot of these documents now are getting pulled. They're, be, they're disappearing off the internet now because... Nobody, everybody was looking for the little disc and little green men from planet Zeta Reticuli. And now they're starting, so there's some researchers that are starting to look at not only what it could be we're dealing with, but what is the military developed off of it. And it's starting to become a problem for our, our government. I mean, um, if you, one of the examples I'll give you, Kevin Day and I have done some shows together and we, he was getting into the fact that whatever was up there that night with the Nimitz pilots, if they'd have been armed, they'd have shot at it. And he said, if they would have shot at it and what you're saying it was, he said, the missile would have returned and blown up the jet. And I said, well, isn't that interesting, Kevin? Wouldn't that be a great thing to be able to do to divert a, a, a missile and not have to fire a shot and have it blow up the Russian aircraft or the Chinese aircraft. And then he was silent, but he still wants to go with the fact that every single thing that went on couldn't have been us. Well, if you did your research on the Nimbus incident, the helmet, which is the F-35 helmet now, but Green and those guys were working on that through um, Penninger, um, the God's helmet. You've heard of that, Grant, right? Yeah. yeah. They were working on the ability to have the mind be stimulated by frequencies to be able to do a lot more, whether it was by a helmet, a chip, or both. And our F-35 now, Northrop Grumman's admitted that they're going to be able to control a whole armada through the helmet of weapons that the pilot's going to be able to do. But one of the problems they have is the pilot's mind can't keep up with the technology. So they're having to work on that. Well, the Nimitz incident, that initial helmet was being used by those pilots which that can be modulated from our our own people. And Day was disingenuous because finally, I forget, I think it was BD or somebody finally found out that our radars can be manipulated by our own technology. Well, and the yeah. interesting thing is they're working on right now is, and you don't have to believe me, but they want to take consciousness from a human and they want to put it in a weapon system because they don't trust AI to do it the right way. Because the biggest thing is, is when you control these unmanned objects, they can be they can be brought down by by frequencies. But the mind itself in AI, it's a whole different animal. And Alexander was working all that, including non-lethal technology. That's so crazy. Have you ever wore one of those God helmets? No. No. <laughs> no, I had the real thing. <laughs> all right even better even better <laughs> um man i just lost my question i'm sorry okay. let, let me pop in with a question here because john just brought it up you talked about the nimitz and the encounters between the 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 people who and they thought they had an engagement the same sort of thing seemed to happen at um rendlesham there so let's get in the interaction between the uaps and the people on the ground i remember you telling me that Kit Green had advised you to do meditation and yoga, certain types of meditation yeah. and yoga. And I asked you how this worked. So uh, is there an interaction? Is well, What's the deal with the UAPs? What are they doing? Are, are you a part of their plan? Are you part of something they want out? I don't know. <laughs> you're asking me, uh, you're asking me, that's why I think it's so funny when everybody thinks they have the inside, like from Simi Van and, Melon and these guys, <laughs> they're all spooks. 
they're not going to even Elizondo. I'm sorry. I like the guy, but he worked inside government. And now he's telling you he wants to get these secrets out to be kept secret himself. Now, I mean, Harry Reid, the same way. He calls for the United States government to lease what they have. But when he was in power, he wanted to put it as an SAP program. So you're you're asking me a question that, well, ask it I'm again. Asking, I guess ask I'm asking the question about your personal encounter. So this was just not you saw a UFO, you got injured. It's gone on for years. There's there's a second part to this story. Your personal well, yeah, they 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 tried to study me. I mean, they uh, and and I'm gonna I'll tell you about the rest of it that I told you was why I didn't want to work with these guys in the very first place. You can't confirm anything they tell you. <laughs> you have no way of proving it. They can. Okay, I'll give you an example. Okay, they did the the government took my DNA at davis monthan and i have records to prove it because there'll be people screaming no they didn't they did alexander backed it up by saying they got my tissue um which means he's still on the inside okay um uh even though he plays like he's not you know i just saw him last year in august same old john same old same old as soon as you walk away from him you're trying to remember what he told you because you know damn well the next time you talk to him it's going to be something different so anyway um so um so they got my tissue. So Green came and visited me um, about a year later here in Illinois. And he gave me some documents he didn't want to put out over the internet. Um, they, um, they told me to study meditation and yoga and meditation. And then he wanted to take my DNA again. Now, the first time what happened was, and this is, I'll make it short and sweet. They came to Sedona. He 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 left. I went back to my house to get let the dogs out. While Pat was still at the hotel with my son. Before I got back, Green had already set up for uh, Cohen Callaher and Nolan to fly. Green was going to fly, or uh, um, Nolan was flying to Vegas the next morning on Saturday, and they were going to drive down to Flagstaff to get my DNA. And so I met with him it was like it was cloak and dagger you know we we went to this hotel the cd hotel and they had a little blotimus there to take my blood and 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 if i didn't even go at first pat and his wife went they told him they i didn't want to do it so they said well we want to hear from him because now green was already on the phone pissed because he thought i'd do it when i told him no in the first place so i go over there and talk to him and i go no, I'm not giving you my DNA. I won't be able to, first of all, you, you're not going to tell me anything, or if you do, how am I going to be able to verify it? And, and I said, but hey, tell Bigelow this, because I know Bigelow's in on this. I said, tell him I want to go to Skinwalker. And they both looked at me and they backed off and they go, you don't want to go to Skinwalker. I go, what do you mean? <laughs> After what you've been through and what you would trigger at Skinwalker, you don't want to go to Skinwalker. Well, I told them no. So they didn't get it. So he shows back up after the government got my DNA and so and I knew this now. So he goes, he goes, uh, we want your DNA, but this time he didn't want my blood. He just wanted a spit sample. Yeah. So that just confirmed to me they got what they wanted, you know, with oh. the blood because because originally they wanted to draw my blood. So when I turned him down, the next time he just took a uh, wanted a spit sample. But I made a stipulation. I said I'm adopted. I said, I have no idea my heritage, my family background. And I said, my son wants to know his family tree from my end of the world. He knows his mom's. So we, um, I gave him a sample for their study, which I've never heard anything. I've got a little bit back on it from Nolan, but um, I gave him a sample for my heritage. So this would have been like May. I think it was like, I'll have to go back. I, I've got the emails. I think it was August. I get a phone call at the house, which he never called me. He always said he wanted the, he wanted to, um, he wanted, he'd always set it up through email. I just get a phone call in the morning. So I answered the phone. I'm, I just woke up. He goes, you need to sit down. And I go, why? I said, I, I am sitting down anyway, but what's going on? He says, your DNA samples came back from you and your son. And you are two of the most unique human beings on planet earth. And I'm like, do tell. Well, I'm not really good at this. No one will have to explain it to you better. But he goes, basically, you, your son is in no known database on planet Earth, and you're in one only. 
And I go, yeah, that's the one you guys took from me at Davis Monthan. What, you know, what are you talking about? And I'm like, kid, you know, that's what I mean with these guys. You, you find stuff out, but then they deny it they'll, or they'll conveniently spin it. So the sum up what Nolan told me was this. He said there are rare bloodlines in the world. And his at, the, at that point, when they did Cadence and mine, they wanted his mother's to confirm whatever they were looking for. Um, but my son had the rarest Hempla group there is. It's known out there. It's super rare. And he had no real heritage. One of me by heritage, I probably say it wrong, is you couldn't say it was native. He was Scandinavian. There was no real, nothing there to say, you know, where his bloodline was. Now, my bloodline was all Native American. And I like, I, first of all, that was the first thing I'm like, what the hell, how could I be native American? You know? And I found out they didn't lie to me about this, that it's possible. You can basically not look like a native American, but have the bloodline. So Nolan comes back and says that, and these are his words and that his mother and I are very, 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 very rare bloodlines to go all the way back to Christ. And that, periodically bloodlines come together to create a new bloodline and that what it, the reason why i had been married before and we had miscarriages and she couldn't his mother couldn't get pregnant she she tried in vitro and couldn't but our two bloodlines are supposed to come together to form a new bloodline so what do you do with that so then i had my stuff looked at and oh they they left out an important document about me the geno splicing or the genetic, you know, whatever they call it, how your you, your genes will change as long the line your bloodline there'll be a like a, spot, a change in your where it changed. I forget the exact word for it. So Green calls me up or sends me an email down the road about a year ago and says, "We want to study your mind again." And I'm <laughs> like, "What now?" He goes, "We're doing a, a I shouldn't say government. He didn't say that. A study funded." to look at what, how much the mind really remembers hypnosis wise based off of hypnosis and everything else, what you saw and what you know from there. And I politely told him, hell no. And he wanted to know why I says, you didn't even give me all the data from the last crap you supposedly did for me. So all of them got on and tried to spin it until I point blank just said, this is the document that's missing. Oh, oh okay. So, now they did send me it, but it was interesting. They gave me a bunch more stuff, but they sent it all on a CD. They wouldn't send it over the internet this time. So I've got all this documentation that was done from a reputable lab in Pennsylvania, you know, top notch lab is like $10,000 per study, which I can't afford, yeah. but I have no way to verify it. I mean, the, the, the a scientist looked at it and said, holy crap, this is real. This is something big, but how do you verify it? I don't have the money to verify this. I can only go off of what Green and Nolan tell me. Did they mention the Monroe Institute in this latest uh, thing they were setting up here? There's a rumor no, God, Nolan doesn't want to really talk to me because he doesn't like the idea that I, I insinuate that this is all being weaponized. So I haven't talked to Nolan in quite a while. <laughs> and um, yeah, and Green and I, we got into it really big. You know how the stuff just leaked out about his paper and all that? His well, paper? It's the paper, that the DIA paper, oh, okay, they just okay, made okay. a big deal yeah. about, okay? Well, we he call, he sends me an email and says, I just want you to know that you, you never were directly addressed in this. He goes, oh, and by the way, all your stuff has been destroyed because of the seven-year HIPAA. And I'm like, yeah, okay. It's so all been destroyed. Yeah, I bet I know where that is. What what file cabinet did that get put into? But and you asked me directly. The first question was, "Will you ever get an answer?" Well, how do you verify any answer you get? You must have an idea what they're doing. You must have an idea what they're up to because you you've dealt with like Nolan and who well, Nolan's an experiencer as well, like you. I mean, he's. He's yeah, I, he admitted it finally, but you know, because these guys they weren't they were disingenuous from the beginning. When they contacted me, they said nothing would ever come out. So then Green goes on above top secret and lays out the whole scenario about it. Okay, <laughs> then they turn around and they weren't going to talk about the DNA stuff, but then they talk about an Annie Jacobson's book. You know, 
So they go into the, 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 the stuff. And now no one's running around talking about all this stuff now. I mean, so you get told one thing and then, then it starts coming out. Well, unfortunately, I'm tied to these guys because Green made sure I was because he admitted he was working with me in the first place. And so now I'm stand, standing there holding, you know, what is it? I, what are they doing? Well, you want my ass opinion? They're trying to weaponize this, which no one doesn't yeah. like when I say it. And they're working on the mind because I really believe they're looking at um, um, the, um, what is it? I just said it before. I'm, I'm still co- recovering from long-term COVID. Um, the um, consciousness, what did, what did I say? The, uh, there's a whole level of the computing. What's the computing they're working on? AI? Right AI? No, no, no. It's a computing. It's the latest computing that they've got. Oh, the quantum, Chinese oh, quantum, quantum consciousness and quantum. And I asked them directly if that's what they were doing. And I didn't get a response. A little so that would be, to... think about the ultimate weapon, Grant. If you can somehow corral consciousness yeah. and use it in weapon systems, yeah. that would be the ultimate. And that's a lot of what the study, in my opinion, and I'm sure they would try to take me on about it because they would spin it. But I, that's one of the things I think they're looking at and, and, and how to make the human mind be capable of doing as much as it can, you know, way beyond the computing power it does. They're trying to stimulate the mind. You know how they say the mind's only 10% used? They're trying to figure out how to use the mind more efficiently and use consciousness more efficiently. Yeah. Never well, you're mind. Right. You're, yeah, you're I'm right sorry. about the weapons because that, that would make total sense. That's what I said. That's why they went to Skinwalker Ranch. They didn't go to Skinwalker Ranch to, to see uh, UFOs or anything. They, they wanted to know how do you put four bulls inside a trailer? How do you make something disappear and reappear? And it's all about weapons. It's all about like, my God, if we could do that, I mean, that yeah. Well, that's sense. what. Well, that's what one of the things that you asked me about me being injured and Adrian being injured. Whatever that was out there, we both had. We were we were there. We were. I went in it. Adrian said I went in it and disappeared. So in essence, if what he saw and remembered is true, and I'm not calling him a liar, I'm just saying just what the mind thinks it saw and what's going on and you know and if was something planted or whatever basically i and it, it kind of backs it up based on what they wanted to know from me and what they were looking at is i like phased out and phased back in and survived yeah. so what effects did it have on the body and how did i survive it yeah, it still you appears know? to me that they have a lot more information than as you pointed out then they're letting on. I mean, I remember I sent you the tape with Kit Green and Kay Randall May, where Kit right. is basically listening to her and going, hang on, let me write that down. And it's like, this stuff, you know, portals and interdimensional stuff. And he's just writing it down like she's like, she's just telling this, this story. And it's like, my God, like he must, they must have way ahead of where we think they are. So again, what kind of technologies do you think that we have we have developed from this this kind of stuff. Other well, than- you, you know that, and this is another interesting thing that doesn't add up to me. Okay, they claim that stuff crashed at Roswell, right? Yeah, yeah. And the government retrieved it, right? Now, allegedly, and, and I shouldn't say allegedly, this is factual because I talked a put off directly about it because when I found out about this, Linda Moulton Howe got some material from the Roswell area yeah. that the army bought some of it. And they're working on this material with tanks and being able to get it to do certain things. Like this is where the legend comes in, where the tanks can cloak, they can disappear, but they can actually have a shell go through it. Now, the first part's true where they're going with it, but supposedly one of the problems they're having is the computing problem is it's supposed to go A to B, but it ends up at D. So it's not, going where it's supposed to and supposedly a human can't be in it they can't withstand it so that's why i'm saying they're they're i think they're starting to realize more and more that the body can't sustain whatever this is and whatever they're learning so they're going to have to control it through computers and ai but can they trust ai not to because that was one of the things that that show i was talking about the ai got out of control it started doing stuff that because it was programmed to learn, it started doing things that the military didn't want it to do. And they were using it against our own technology because we have the best technology. The British and the Americans have the best radar and 
that type of technology. So when people say they wouldn't test it on us, why wouldn't they? If our technology is better than everything else, they're going to have to get it to learn how to adapt to that, that technology, never mind foreign adversaries, but our technology is ahead of it. So they're going to have to do that. You know, and it's interesting that both encounters with the Navy were done when they were unarmed. Think about that. This stuff went on when they were unarmed. They weren't armed. And the other thing that we didn't we didn't touch on in 1960, I was told this and it's true. The Navy completely mapped the entire Earth for all the hot spots in the EM. Hot spots of what? EM, the whole frequency oh, okay. thing. They went around and started that in 1960. Wow. So they've been working on this stuff for a while. And again, I don't know if, I don't, I can't tell you what they know where it's from or all that other stuff, but I do believe whatever they're doing with, they're, they're learning how to utilize it. Yeah. Now, whether or not Eisenhower met with somebody in some bunker or, you know, I'm just saying all that stuff. I don't know. What I do know is, and I talked to Dr. Mitchell before he died, and he told me that that's what we encountered in Rendlesham, and a lot of what's going on is UAP involvement. He told me that. He said that. That's what he told me. So they're they're definitely trying to utilize it, and that would make it SAP across the board. And these congressmen and senators, they're not going to get it. I don't know who gets it, Grant. You've done more study on that than me. <laughs> I don't really know who makes the decision. But you know, as well as I do, the president doesn't has doesn't you know regularly work with these people. He simply gets a briefing every morning. So he's not talking, you know, to you know, all this other stuff. So I really don't know who's pulling the pushing the buttons behind the scene. My guess would be partly defense contractors too, yeah. because they're the ones developing it. And that's another thing I want to bring up that I've always found interesting. You know how, what are we missing? 20 trillion now? I think they said, <laughs> yeah. Well, if you do the budgets for the last 25 years, we, we didn't even get a lot of 20 trillion. So if you really think about it, what they're doing is just funding the defense. That's why they can't get audited. And that's why they always cover black projects. The, 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 that kind of funding does not affect the economy. So they can print as much money as they want. These companies get the money and these fat cats get it, but they keep the ball rolling. And because how can you explain that besides they can't account for 20 trillion when the budget doesn't even equal 20 trillion? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, but these are all questions that could it end up getting you hurt? Maybe, but most people don't care. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Most people are busy making a living and trying to, you know, pay their taxes. That's, well, no, but they get lied to all the time. What do you believe anymore? I don't, you know, this whole whole inflation was planned. I mean, I'm not trying to get off UFOs, but there's some economists now have said they planned it. They had to, to deflate the dollar to reduce the debt. And they laid it out perfectly. And they've been trying to do this for the last 10 years. So th there's no explanation for everything going on, but most people don't have the time to look. And there's no reputable news agency left that'll even question it. The last decent report that was ever done was by 60 Minutes on the Oil when it went way through the roof under Bush. But they found out two years prior to going through the roof, consumption had already stopped. But the excuse was it was consumption. And there hasn't been a decent story since on anything. And look at UFOs. Name me one, one group out there that that's out there that's reputable that the the country would listen to right now. Who do you turn to? Yeah, you're right. Well, hey, and then you get all these crazy stories coming out. Well, see, that's that's let's kick it towards the crazy story side a little bit. I'm just teasing, but you know, just from speaking with other experiencers, like these things don't stop with your encounter. You know, Penniston has been very limited about what has happened with him since the forest, you know, and you, you admitted to wearing the real deal on the helmet and we know those trigger something, but is there any other experience? Well, well, I can tell you two you? things that's happened. There, I can tell you two things that happened to me that, that can't be explained. Um, I lived in Sedona for a couple of years and I went out one night with somebody that had, a, well, 
I want to be careful what I say. They, they're, they're studying that area. There's government people or, or contract people that used to work for the government are up there looking at the area. And um, I went out there over Bradshaw Ranch one night and they were talking about the C5, CE5 or whatever. That's a bunch of crap. Okay. And what I mean is, is, is that there's people that exploit it because they claim you can, you know, you can meditate and you can draw something in, right? Well, that's so vague. And I, I feel sorry for the people that spent thousands of dollars, but this is what happened. We went out there, we were out there a little bit and this person said, well, they normally, they were in a remote viewing program and stuff that we normally do a certain type of meditation before stuff starts happening. Mm -hmm. And right about when they said that, um, all of a sudden the temperature dropped 10 degrees. They had a meter, an EM meter and the EM meter pegged. And the next thing you know, for the next hour, I had one of the craziest shows I've ever seen go on, including stuff over the top of us and everything else. So that happened up there. And when they were done, they stated, yeah, the government will be calling you pretty soon. <laughs> and, and I just kind of looked at him like, oh, isn't that joyful? Um, but then another thing happened that I've talked about before a little bit, but there was some interest from the Hopis. And cutting to the chase was I went up to some of their sacred dances, and one of them was where no white people were allowed, and I was taken up there. And I'll never forget it because you would think a white person just showing up on the top of their sacred mesa would draw attention. No one even acted it was like a big deal. I was there. So I got to see one dance and I was being escorted back and a blue Kachina dancer appeared and handed, um, handed me and the guy that was escorting me a root. Now I was instructed to plant a root in my backyard when I got back home. So I did. And right after I planted it, an hour later, all kinds of weird things happened in the house with some blue orb showed up and a red orb showed up. And that drove, drove the, the blue orbs drove the red orb away. So that happened. So then they wanted, that happened to my son. It wasn't to me. And then they brought my son up there for his own little adventure, which I won't go into much other than that at the end of their last dance, I don't know if have you ever seen a Hopi dance or heard anything about them. No. They give out presents and the treats. Okay. Then the last dance, everything was given to him. Wow. They came over to him. He was sitting with the elder and he was given all the stuff. So yeah, there's been some strange things that happened, including green, including put off mm -hmm. um, this stuff that I can't explain, but here's the problem. It happened, but what does it mean? Well, what does it mean to you? I don't know. You never do that. I can speculate. I can speculate, but I can't prove it. Right. Well, we, Grant and I dabble in this realm of, you know, the forefront and speculation and, you know, this personal meaning, you know, having this broader meaning, you know, through it out at all. I think that's where Grant was kind of going. Like, you know, through all the anthology, when you sit back, you know, what does this mean to you, like this personal quest or this interaction with the phenomenon or the effects from it? Like, well, if you just go by what's been presented, they believe certain people and, and they've never really clarified this unless they have. And I just I've stopped paying attention to a lot of it right. was they were the last I was told was they weren't totally sure if the effects happened to you after the encounter or were already there. And that's what drew you into the phenomenon. Now that doesn't mean other people can't have an encounter. It's just the way the encounter happens. So I don't know for sure if they've clarified if other than just the bloodline stuff where we're supposedly different than yeah. they didn't say we were aliens, which that's what really gives me the heebie jeebies. Oh, well, there's an alien bloodline out there. Oh my God. I mean, I, I just shake my head because there's no proof that there is. And, and can you imagine if that ever came out of the government that there are people out there that are different, just the way we treat each other? And so, so is there why they were definitely studying military involvement? Now, the question is, I, it makes sense because here's the reason why, Grant, you asked 
they can they can account for those encounters. Do you understand what I mean? They can get the medical the, records, right? The, yeah, yeah, they have the medical records and they know it took place. Not to say that people that had their own encounters didn't, but that's a lot more hearsay than it is military guys. This event happened. We know what happened. We have their medical records and everything else. So they're more viable to study. And, and not only that, but there are more close encounters usually that can be verified military people had. Now, the interesting thing about Green, and he's all over the map, is he'll say every person he's studied, he can say can trace back to our own technology. But he doesn't really say where our, that technology came from in the, in the, initially. How did we develop this technology? But then he did leave it open, and I saw something the other day where he said him and Nolan or Nolan said that they both agree there's more to this than it can be explained. So, again, where do you go on? Here's the leading people that are getting funded through the government, and they're, they're working with the government and Congress. And anytime you get close to a serious question, they clam up with national security. Yet they don't agree with it being national security, but they clam up with it being national security. Yeah, well, How do you ever get straight answers? Oh, yeah, but they're speculating as well, correct? I mean, they're they're sort of guessing at the bloodline and then trying to get you know the, some more blood into you know see if their speculation is right. I think everybody's sort of speculating, which leads to the question: What do you think the UAP thing is all about? What are the UAPs, and and what are they doing? We can talk, we're, we've talked about what the government may be doing, and well, what, if you if you go and look at the data. Whatever it is, is intelligent, is energy-based, but it appears to be here. And I think Bigelow, wasn't he the one that said that you'll be surprised they're here and living among us? Yeah. But he didn't really clarify what he meant by they. Well, Lou, Lou even alludes to that. It's like, what are we... What are we going to do when we find out this phenomenon isn't ET? It's here, or has been here, or it's a part of this, you know, part of our right. Well, I mean, we argue over how we recreate it, right? Exactly. Well, and okay, so let me let me ask this question this way. So you go through all these tests, you don't get any real answers, but so they tell you about the special bloodline thing. Yeah. That's heavy, man. Because yeah, well, but I can't verify it. You understand heavy, the ramifications of that? What that could mean alone are they have a Jesus bloodline. No, he you said know. it dates back to the right. Christ they, bloodline, and that's what he I didn't mean. Say it was Jesus bloodline. Times. So I mean, that in and of itself is heavy duty. I mean, so just knowing that there's a human record out there like that and you're attached to it and i know we're saying jesus time so i don't mean it this way but you know to give you a personal like messiah complex or something you know that's heavy that's something like you said this is a special something about you so how do you wrestle that in this anthology you know and not well, come out of it with a messiah complex like well because because i can't yeah. verify it number one but here's what what i'll say to you i still can't get people to believe i got my settlement based on the fact i was injured at rendles from forest i have presented at conferences where i've shown the documents i posted my last move on one where i showed the documents showing that a that i was injured in the line of duty my my whole case was based off of Rendlesham and where it happened. And, and Billy Cox verified that right after we made the announcement. And they still don't believe it. Salas will tell me I'm full of crap still. And I just saw him last year. I have to authenticate it. What do you mean, you old man? You were sitting down in a bunker underground. You never even saw anything. I'm just, I'm just sorry. That's how that's how I get ticked off. Okay. The government admitted that I was injured in the line of duty at Rendlesham Forest. Okay. Now they didn't say what injured me, they just said I was. Now, the documents that were presented showed that, that including condyne was accepted as evidence, okay? Yeah. So, you can't get the government, and then they give Billy Cox this answer. Well, you know, we don't give out settlements unless it's injured in the line of duty in a particular event, but we can't verify anything else based off of HIPAA rules and medical reasons to say exactly what went on. So, I that's why there's interest in me from two stars or not whatever loose group now I actually did and I'm one of the few publicly I, there's other people behind the scenes 
that, um, and Green even said that, he said that Bent Water should never have gotten out, but it did. And that um, because now that I won my case, which they were pushing for, hopefully I would, that then there's some more ammunition to go to Congress with to say, well, yeah, it's true. And they're hiding it. You know, they're hiding this stuff and they didn't even take care of me at first. It took, it happened really fast for VA stuff, but it took a lot of stuff that went on behind the scenes with a lot of agencies for me to get my settlement that the government admitted I was injured, but they're not telling you what it was and they're not releasing my medical records. Yeah. And they took your tissue sample. Well, that happened now at the VA. Yeah. DOD doctor took it. Yeah. He, that was a weird thing in itself. He showed up right when I went down there and he, he, he shadowed me the whole way. He handled everything, all my stuff, everything that went on. Normally nurses, after you've had your surgery, would take the things out. Every single thing about me was bagged and tagged by him. That's wild. Yeah. You, you mentioned cells. Let me go back to this experience thing again, your sort of role and, and speculation, but I mean, it always appears to me that you get Salas. He's an experiencer. Then you get um, Jacobs writes the, the nuke books. And then suddenly he's an experiencer. And then you start going like, something's going on here. Like the, you, it, it goes beyond Rendlesham, this idea that they're looking at you as this sort of um, a person that's different than everybody else, that you're sort of the link that you watch the experiencers. And I think it was Pendolfi. I went to I went to, to Dan Smith. I said, did Pendolfi actually say this? He said, uh, lights in the sky do not produce any usable information because we cannot control the phenomena we watch the people that are affected by the phenomena and that seems to be what's going on here is you get Nolan's an experiencer some events an experiencer you're an experiencer Silas is an experiencer Jacobs is an experiencer and you go down the the the, the list of uh, of people and you see this connection which makes me you know go back to this thing of, of how, how is what's your your connection is your son is he interested in this is he does he realize what's going on here <laughs> my son's an interesting character um you know he's followed it some you know he was blown away by what happened up there in hopi um i i've he knows what's going on he doesn't say much you know okay. um he doesn't say much it, that night in his room was mind-blowing the interaction that went on um but I think you guys are trying to pry out of me. Do I think I'm special? I don't know no. what's going on. I, I don't, I can't give you a straight up answer. Was I a normal person until after the event happened? If what they're telling us is true, you know, did what I encountered change me? Um, did I disappear and go somewhere else and have everything change? Did I come back or they attracted to me because, you know, of something different about us? Um, I mean, you can't even get geneticists other than that one guy that I had look at my stuff that said there was an important document missing. He said, if this is true, this is a whole different animal that, you know, going down the road and all that. Think about all the studies. How open are they about the Christ bloodline, um, all the artifacts and everything else? There's always stuff that surfaces that gets refuted or gets spun about, you know, different things like Pandora's box and everything else. So none of this stuff is ever... You can't nail it down. And that's just like with me. Do I have special powers? I don't know. Have I been told to see if I do as far as was I given instructions on how to find out if I do? Yeah. Have I done that? No. Yeah. I'm, um, not, I'm not really saying that you think you're special, but that it appears that they think that you have something. It's almost like the rumors like John Alexander was that, you know, he was there and uh, Rendell Shami had the briefing thing. He that all these guys knew right from the word go that this was this was a live thing and they've got to shut this down and screw it up or whatever. It's almost like they seem to know that the people are a big part of this thing. Not that they're special, but you you've got to interact with the people rather than what people are doing. You know, lights in the sky it doesn't doesn't get you anywhere. But when you start looking at you and all these other people, then you realize that they're paying attention. They're paying attention to to Chris Bledsoe. They're they're watching all the all the experiencer things. In that you are part of this mystery. You are part of why this the whole thing is going on. Um. Yeah, I mean, you can't deny that people have had some kind of interaction with something, okay? And I, I call it a phenomenon, or UAP is the new, you know, terminology. I don't know if you knew this, but it's interesting that UAP doesn't get as many hits on, on the internet as UFO still does. UFO still is the big 
draw. So a lot of people are writing UFO and then they go into UAP. After. Let me ask you a question about that because UAP was the British term, right? Was that was on... used way back by Jenny Randall's and know that group. Yes. Okay, they UAP. Did. And then Podesta, there was a rumor that Podesta had had a meeting with Hillary Clinton and Nick Pope. And, 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 and that, that, that when you remember Hillary Clinton came out 2015 and then they didn't ask her the question you brought up. She's the first one that said, oh, there's a new nomenclature. They're now called UAPs rather than UFOs. And, and this is this whole story is, did they, did they adopt this from the British in order to mess this thing up? And was this, oh, I think it was planned, this whole thing of changing the name to, to UAPs rather than UFOs. And it was this idea that pe- there was this rumor that, that Pedesta had had a meeting and Nick Pope was there and, and uh, Leslie Kane and, uh, you know, uh, all, all these people. And that that's where they adopted this idea that they were going to bring this UAP thing out. I mean, it could be because Condine supported it. Do you understand? It was it was in 2006 when the report was released. Um, the interesting thing is Green said this in Mirage Man. He said that initially all these stories and movies and books oh, have yeah. everybody freaking out. And then when the real truth starts coming out, people say, well, that's not so bad. So is it possible that they've decided, you know, to... Um, to change it a little bit, to calm people down. It could be another thing that Lou keeps making a big deal about how there's more and more sightings going on. Well, here's the interesting thing. We have satellites that are tracking this. Lou came out and said it. I can say it now because he said it, but I got told about this. But so they have a better idea of what's going on and where it's coming from. But the interesting thing is, is that when you use the word UAP, it does take away from the alien eating you and, yeah. you know, and all that. But how much more have they told us about what a UAP is? No. No. They haven't told us anything. Chris, that was like in, in 1952, they changed the term from flying saucer to UFO. That was, Rupelt came up with the UFO term, and it was to divert people away from the impression of their, their flying saucers, flying discs, which sort of implies what's going on, and, and make it sort of this nebulous thing that you can really talk about without getting into any detail. No, no, I understand. And, and not only that, but um, again, then now you're trying, now you're chasing down UAP documents instead of UFO or flying saucers. Um, but also you, you, you put those all three together into a big toxic soup. Where do you start from? That's what Warrell and I did with the book. We started looking at, based off of Bentwaters and what they were working on, where where how this could lead to weapons and everything else and that's why the book was called weaponization of a uap and i mean the british government and in there was their response they said they can't talk about what it is period to include having um work with inside the government you know the industrial complex so this is all classified and to include that our adversaries could learn about what they were working on yeah. Yeah. so all i'm getting at is th- there's a clear definition that they want they want to weaponize this yeah okay and then then the next question is how in you know disingenuous or how truthful are all these people being and i can't tell you for sure i can tell you i walk away after talking with most of them with the headache (laughs) i do not i mean green told me that Everything he worked on was not classified. Then he did that article in the newspaper and he said, he can't talk about the classified stuff he did. Well, you can't make this stuff up. You just can't. It's so frustrating, you know? And do I wonder if I have some kind of ability? Yeah. May I start looking at it a little closer now that things, after things calm down, maybe. But again, I don't, I can't give you a definitive answer, Grant, what, where this, what this is all about or where this is going, other than there's clearly funding being given to these guys and they're studying interactions people have had and that they're looking at it from definitely a weapons possibility. What's the, what's Kit Green, Kit Green's role? Is he, is he like one of the key guys that under, that would sort of how the pieces are put together? He's been in the CIA since 1969 he worked on the remote viewing all this kind of stuff he's been in the the spook world of ufos and paranormal we sort of describe what you think is he the key guy is he a key guy that knows how all the pieces are put together because when i listen to him everything he says i don't know if i believe him or not but i listen very carefully every time he talks well he was on the weird desk and he was looking his job his big job when he was in was to analyze the russian threat yeah. And that was one of the things that the 
um, OSI agents said was they came in to analyze. One of the things they said about Reynolds was what was interesting was they were detecting an anomaly every time the phenomenon showed itself. And that's why the NSA came in and they put equipment out there to try to understand what the anomaly was. But the interesting thing was he was he was clearly involved in technology and what the other side had for sure. And obviously what we had. And when he left, he's gone into if you follow his background and put background, they've always been around technology. So, you know, I mean, you, have you ever heard of a guy by the name of Andy Marshall? No, no. He was called Yoda. And he ran, he had, he had, he helped bring the Russians down. He trained all of the secretaries, defense secretaries, all the way up through Gates and everything else. And his think tank was the number one technology think tank in the world. And he ran and Chuck DeCaro went to work for him after he looked at Randallstrom. So there's another coincidence. But um, the interesting thing is, is that these, they all are around exotic technology. And the biggest question is, is when we develop this new technology, and Lou says you're seeing more and more of it, is it us or is it them or is it both? Yeah. And you it can't is, get an answer. Yeah, it makes sense. Because if you know, I wrote the book on Dr. Eric Walker back in 1990, and he sort of pointed out correctly, he said, why should we change the room? And he was the second in command of weapon research in the, in the Pentagon at the time. He said, right. why should we, and he was chairman of the board of the Institute of Defense Analysis, top military think tank. He said, why should we change the rules to satisfy your curiosity? Who cares if John Burroughs and Grant Cameron are curious? Why should we change the rules? It's all about weapons. It's all about military. It's in national insecurity and all this kind of stuff. And, and he basically saying, why should we change the rules? We, and because that's true that a lot of people it's just curiosity they want to know what's going on it's not that they can really change anything or do anything they're just curious no and i agree and for me first of all it was life and death after i got sick yeah. so i was trying to figure out get get the 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 people that were involved for instance together to see if what we missed and what was going on and what was true and what was not that never happened um then i got sick and then the full court press went on on that and to be honest with you, I mean, I, I can't argue with the guy totally other than, I mean, basically, doesn't that sound like God? That they, they, they're they actually taking the place of God, that they feel they're above everybody else to make decisions on what's going to affect humanity. And that's probably part of our problem, that I understand different countries are at each other's throats for, you know, economically, technology-wise, weapons, everything else, which is sad in itself. But ultimately, whatever goes on, it's, it's not an individual country's problem. It's, a, it's our, our whole world. And, and is it right that these people have that much control? I, I can't answer that. that. That was what Eisenhower said, beware the military. In fact, what he said was beware the military industrial congressional complex. He took congressional out because they didn't want to offend the Congress and the last thing. But it was this idea when you get the circle that the congressmen are in the loop and the the, the, the military people are in the loop and the, the contractors are in the loop. How do you stop the loop? The money's flowing around. And how do, how do you break, break the loop? I and mean, everybody's got their hand in the pot. Well, you can't because that's the way the system's set up. I mean, I, I can't speak for Canada, Britain, or everything else, but in our place, there's only a few people probably in Congress, and those are committee heads. You know, Mike McCain was before he died. They're in charge of the most important committees with national security, weapon, you know, weapons and all that, and they get these briefs. But again, again, here's the $20 question. Are they being told the truth all the time? Yeah. I, I, I haven't been told the truth. I, I, they can get offended by me. But I know damn well they're holding stuff back on me, number one. And do I have a right? I don't know. I can't answer that. But I can tell you this. They're interested in me, but I'm not allowed to be interested in them. <laughs> That's it. Okay, I'm not allowed to ask any questions. I just need to sit down, shut up, and color. And when they need me, they break the glass and they want me to go do something for them. But I'm not allowed to get any answers or understand anything at all what's going on and then even if they tell me something i have no way of verifying it because how do i i don't have the money to go out and retest everything and then even then these labs are probably controlled by them anyway well what, i got one last question and i'll let nicole if she wants to ask a question have you been contacted by any of the other witnesses when they realized that they were part of the study and you're part of the study have, have people you don't have to mention who they are but have you gotten contacts from some of the other people who are involved in this sort of investigation 
No, nobody, um, nobody that was in the the blind. They called it a blind study, whatever. You know, they 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 attached a number to it, not a person's name, but obviously they could trace the number back. Um, the only thing that I know is is that it was mentioned once that the, all the people that were up there at Skinwalker, the special forces, were studied, but I've never spoken to them, and that doesn't mean I won't or will. But you know, again. It, Again, this whole thing is just a big toxic mess, in my opinion. And um, I, you know, I, I gave them my DNA, and I assume they wanted it to verify something, but they already had it. So what? Why did I need to, you know? And is there something for me in the future? Could be. I don't know. And I'll be honest with you, Grant. I don't know what I want to do anymore. I'm kind of tired of all this. Yeah. But you got to you play know, the big game. Like you, you're, you want your son to be a big football player. I mean, he played in the Super Bowl. I mean, it's the biggest story of all times. And you got to play like not a major role, but you got to play in the game. I mean, most people don't even know what the hell's going on. They haven't, they haven't got yeah, but at least in you playing football, you get you get told the objective and <laughs> the play and what how to execute it. I just know something happened to me, and now all these people want to know something that again, they're they're take they're trying to learn from me, but I'm not allowed to ask any questions or learn anything. <laughs> and if I make an assumption or an accusation, then I get shunned like no one. Oh, you know, I, oh, you're making me mad. I'm going to leave the whole program. Uh, well, Gary, are you that naive to think that if the government's funding your project, that they're not doing it for their own reasons, too, that they just, you know, what's going on? So, you know, it's just like, you know what? That's what I'm saying. I'm getting to the point now where I just want to tell them all to go to hell. And if I do have some powers, don't mess with me, Jack, because, you, you know, you ain't coming around me anymore. And I'm saying that lightheartedly. You know what I mean? But wow. this is like, to me, this is sad. And all this speculation and all these leaks and rumors and, and, and stuff doesn't help. It doesn't do much good. So no, that's where I spin into um, the part of our community that has statistics on members of our community that they've helped each, each other gather. And I'm thinking like Grant just said, have these other people from this study, you know, found you or have you guys talked, but you said you don't really know where to go or what to do anymore. <laughs> You're giving up. Do you ever think about pursuing like Preston Dennett's statistic is there's one in 40 of us, you know, at any, you know, in a group or statistically throughout our population. So do you see yourself in the future kind of maybe trying to pursue other people like you and maybe just finding answers on that level since you're not going to get any from. Well, can, can I ask you a question? Sure. Do you think they know any more than I do? I'm not trying to be. No, yeah, but it's like and we're not getting we're not getting told the truth. It's think like about this. I'm supposed thing. to be I'm supposed to be an experiencer that's important to the government allegedly, mm -hmm. but I can't get any answers. Right. Well, I mean, even just concerning these abilities or something that might be going on, you know. Just you know what? You know what? That that thing is scary. That, that is the scary. ability part yeah. in the bloodline is scary because again. We're fighting right now. There's war going on in Ukraine. These fights go on all the time. And that's what supposedly human beings on planet Earth. Can you imagine? Like, think about and you've been you've watched these TV shows, right? Do you remember Cyber Command where the guy had a chip in his brain and he could control everything? And do you remember the one show they had out for a little bit where there were people that were special? They called them special or different. They could do different things. And all they were doing was being hunted down. Yeah, that's yeah, always and, the anthology. That's yeah, so here's the interesting thing. When I said about um, Roswell, if they really recovered stuff, why did they want to buy Linda's stuff and work on it? And if we're something about us, is there's something about us that way, why are we still walking around? Right. You know, why ha haven't all of us that are being studied and stuff, why haven't we been taken somewhere? You know, I don't want to be taken. So I'm not suggesting that anybody who's listening, I'm just saying we're still all here. So right. what exactly is the truth? What is really going on? I, I have know. less answers today, even though I've been around these people more and I have some ideas and it's in the book somewhat. But what is really going on? What is what ultimately grant that the, the biggest question is what is their agenda? 
what do they got planned for us? Yeah. <sighs> and and how, how, how do you stop them if they you finally decide that they have everything they need? It's like if they learn to hack reality, if they learn how the universe works, they can hack reality and change all the laws of the, you know, use the laws of the universe. So what do you, how do you stop them? Uh, good question. It'd have to be somebody on the inside that felt that it wasn't right and could supersede it. Now, that is an interesting point. Yeah. What, we got about five minutes left. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people that have had experiences keep saying that whatever it is is from the future coming back to try to alter what happened. Yeah. And that may be the way it stops, if you believe that. I mean, is there something that happens or has happened that, you know, um, that the future figures a way to come back to alter that, to keep it from happening and change reality. I mean, to me, if it's possible, that would be probably one of the only ways you could stop it. Weinstein called this scenario a time loop and temporal hacking. And he said, if you put it in those terms, that is the, like the scariest reality that we might well, have to face in this scenario well, well to bring up something that happened that i know they're interested in about me was my hypnosis in 88 there were two things that stood out number one i could talk to them real time and number two they told me that at some point in the future they'd be back for me those are two things that came out so that wow. clearly got their interest that that these this group got their interest in why why could I communicate? And that didn't come from them. That actually came from the army where it was studied by the army. I got sucked into that one before green and those guys showed up where they actually analyzed my, um, my hypnosis and they had me show up someplace and they gave me a briefing on it. And here's the problem again, Grant, you know how I get it, get on you, right? Yeah. People tell you bits and pieces about the truth. Okay. And the real truth is, is that I can't verify the truth, okay? Why did these army guys show up out of Fort Meade and meet with me and sit down and go over everything and lay this all out, okay? Why was Bob Emenegger involved in my initial hypnosis? Why did all these people show interest? Why did Putoff know about my initial hypnosis and was involved in it in 88? And so was the intelligence agencies, which I was briefed on. I was told they were, and they were interested in my interaction yeah. and stuff. But I can't tell you this is what's happened and I'm not lying about it, but what does it mean? I don't know. Number one. And, I, and that's the hard part. And then you get these little leaks and, and it's not the truth. And it hurts not only me, it hurts Rendlesham and it hurts the whole thing when the glad. real truth needs to be put together. And that's why we tried to put together a timeline about the incident itself in the book. Well, that, that's why I'm glad you're out there trying to sort this thing out and, and get some sort of truth out there as little as you can do. You mentioned the, the hypnosis. You've never released the whole hypnosis tape. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> that, that's not coming out, man. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Now, one, one thing you about know, that. Well, you I'll say this. Book. You think the binary was controversial? Oh, yeah. the rest okay. of this stuff would, yeah. But that okay. would make sense. If you can talk directly to them, I can see why they'd be interested. And let me confirm this, that this is what Emma Gare told me. You can confirm this, that uh, when they were doing UFO cover up live in 1975, Dick Betsky, who was a CIA guy who was on the set the entire time they filmed. And that he said that when they were going to do the regression with you, that he went to Sandler and said, we need somebody to do aggression. He said, hang on. And he phoned CIA and the two guys that were involved were CIA people, psychologists. Well, here's the deal. Okay. I can tell you this much. UFO cover up live contacted me and it wouldn't have been in 75. It would have been in 1988, 88, 88. Yeah. Um, they brought me to LA. I met with the producer. The executive producer was Coop, Kurt Brubaker, yeah. which the, right then and there, when I met him, and he goes back to John Lear and Lear Jets. He worked for GM, and then he had his own technology division company in the East, on the West Coast. He was looking at this completely different than everybody else at that very moment about technology and what affected us and how it could be utilized. They brought me in. They, they took me out. I met with the producer. He was trying to record me secretly. I caught him. And then after the meeting, Brubaker took me back to his house in Beverly Hills and said, the whole Bentwater thing is dead. He oh. goes, we're not going to put you on UFO cover up live now. 
but we want to hypno we want to do hypnosis on you. Wow. So I agreed to that, and the hypnosis was done, and and Eminager was in the middle of it all. Yes, and it got circulated around to all the defense intelligence agencies to include later on this army guy, or at least that's what he said he was. I don't know who for sure. I knew he was military or you know government, but I don't know. They can make up a fake ID, but he actually briefed me on some of it. Yes. Yeah. And I almost had the regression tape until you stopped it when when Brubaker's daughter contacted me. She had a copy of it? <laughs> What's that? No, she didn't send any. You blocked it. You went to Brubaker and then he gave her shit. He said, what are you doing? And, and then she stopped talking to me. Yeah, Which, I did. I did. I <laughs> don't want that. Out. Grant, I almost had Grant, the tape. <laughs> do you understand? Do you understand how much grief this has caused overall for a lot of people in, in Rendlesham? I mean, there are people out there that are legitimately still that were injured out there that are sick from this. They can't get care. Yeah. But Stins and I got it because it's highly it was highly documented that we were there. We were involved. They couldn't deny it. Hall confirmed it. He wrote a letter to the to the DOD about what happened that we weren't allowed to see. Uh, Williams, when I met with him, um, was very upset that the VA wasn't taking care of me. And he gave classified documents to McCain that had, had his daughter who worked up on the Hill carry him, hand carry him to uh, DC and gave him to McCain himself personally. So uh, Bastins and I got taken care of. I can't tell you what Penniston did or didn't get because one time he said he did get, he is on disability for it. Then he denies it. But Bastins and I did, but we weren't bought off. I'm not, out. I think you know me now. I'm telling yeah, yeah. you what I know. I didn't get bought off. Yeah. Okay. I'm not lying. I don't have all the answers. And, and to be honest, would you expect me to have them? Why would I get them over anybody else? But you've always been very honest and, and just upfront that you've said things that you, you don't really give a shit what anybody says. You just, you're going to tell the truth. You're going to say what you think. I'm going to tell you what I remembered and what happened exactly. to me. Yes. Exactly. And when I do it, I can back it up. That book, every single thing we put in there, we can verify it. We've got documents and everything else. Every single interaction I've had with Green and put off, most of them anyway, that I talk about, I've got documentation to back it up to include all my, um, my, uh, DNA study and everything else. But here's the problem. How do you verify it? That was one of the biggest reasons why I didn't want to deal with them in the first place. Because they promised they'd keep it confidential and they didn't. And then when whatever they say, if it strikes a nerve somewhere and it causes a problem, how do you prove or disprove what they're telling you is true? Where is the verification to it at all? Yeah. They, they're holding all the cards. I agree. But yes. I'm, glad, I'm glad you've exposed it with your as much as you can with the book. I've, I've always appreciated the fact that you're upfront and, and you've been very open and uh, you've exposed a lot of stuff that never would have come out. Right. Well, and who knows what's next? Because every time I think it's safe to come out of the water, <laughs> the next email pops in or phone call. Uh, so, I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. But it's not, it's not, I trade places with you, Grant, today. You can take my place. <laughs> <laughs> people say they want to know and they want to get involved well okay no problem yeah. i've said that all along i'd be happy to trade places with you <laughs> well thank you john for doing the interview i really appreciate it and hopefully we can talk again and uh I, I've, I've always enjoyed when you were doing with linda you were sort of a balance to linda and you were you, you know the, <laughs> Then let me ask the real questions now. <laughs> well, listen, I, I don't fault anybody for their work, and she's yeah. been in it for a long time. Yeah. I just have a different perspective on how I view things. That doesn't make me right, because yeah. to be honest with you, if I was not me and I was listening to my story, I probably think it yeah. was mostly full of crap anyway. I agree. I, I say the so, same thing. If, if we hadn't had the experiences, we'd think that, you know, uh, that it's all crazy stuff too it's, it's our yeah. experiences that have changed us so who knows what's the truth and not that's yeah. that's yeah. how i went in this what is the real truth and how close to will we ever get to it i don't know but yeah we'll keep in touch grant and if you Beautiful. got here's my thing with you if there's something about me it comes up don't be afraid to ask yeah. i'll tell you the truth yeah okay john i uh, take you right. up on that and thank you very much for doing the interview and thank thank you thank you thank you Thank You're you. welcome. Have a great have a great rest Thank of your you. weekend. Nice thanks, to see you, John. Yeah, thanks. Good talking to you too. Take Bye -bye. care, guys. Bye. -bye. Bye.